Hey everybody, welcome back to another quick tie. My name is Tim Hepworth here with Fly Fishing Bow River Outfitters and Thursday Night Live Fly Tying. Uh, we are gonna be tying up the Hare's Ear Parachute today. And this quick tie is brought to you by Western Canada Fly Fishing Guide School. Um, you can see the fly right there. That's what we're gonna be working on here in a minute. Uh, but a couple things first, I don't want you to forget to like and subscribe to this video. Hit that little bell icon. It's gonna let you know next week when we have a couple more flies uh, coming your way in the quick ties. I'm gonna be tying out of my season six kit. Hey, this is coming out of season six, episode 10. So if you go in there, grab your um, episode 10 package, you're gonna see two flies in there and it can be pretty obvious which one is which. Um, if you're tying out of our individual kits, uh, just use it as it is. You're gonna have the same thing. It'll be marked as to what to use. And if you're not tying out of our kits, that's fine. If you head over to our website, you're gonna find a full fly recipe um, for each of the flies we do in our quick ties and you can still tie along with us. Um, so let's head on over to the vise and let's take a peek at this fly. So this is uh, kind of based off of the traditional hare's ear nymph. So we're just using hare's ear, a little bit of flash, and we're tying it in a pair of post fashion. So as a bit of an emerger um, kind of style pattern. So this is kind of an, a unique little bug. Looks very buggy. Um, could probably go into the caddis realm or the mayfly realm as far as what it appears on the water. So let's go ahead and get started. So let's pop that one out of the vise. We'll get our other hook in. We're gonna be si uh, tying this in decent size today. So it's gonna be size 12. So it's not, uh, not super small, which is nice. Make sure we get that nice and level. Still not level. <laughs> there we go. Um, I'm gonna be tying with some UTC 70 tonight. I'm doing it in black. You're not really gonna see the thread much, but this is a pretty close match to my hackle, which you're, uh, is kind of where you're gonna be finishing this fly. So let's go ahead and start off by getting our thread started just behind the eye. Work it back a little ways. We'll break off that tag end. The very first thing we're gonna do on this fly is, is tie in the tail portion. So we've got some uh, very fine deer hair that we're gonna be using. You could use elk as well. Um, something that's maybe got some bars on it kind of makes it uh, just look a little better. It's very well matched in color to the hair, hairs you're dubbing as well that we'll be using. So I just want you to grab a very small pinch. We're not gonna use very much of this um, for the tail. We don't want a super bulky tail. And if we cut this off of here just right, we might not even have to stack it. So I'm gonna grab a portion, something like that. There will be a little bit of under hair in this as well. So when I trim it out, just trim maybe a little more than you think you need. So when you pull that stuff out, you're still gonna have, there we go. So that lined up pretty good. I'll grab the tips and just pull out any of that under fluff that's in there. Try to re-grab. Yeah, I'm happy with how that's gonna look. So you can see you got those kind of nice barred striations on that tail fiber or fiber. So when I tie in this tail, I want it to be roughly a hook shank in length out the back, maybe a smidge less, but we do want it to be prominent enough that it's gonna be seen by the fish. I'm just gonna switch over hands here. I'm gonna start off by tying this in a little bit forward and then a little bit rearward. I'm still holding on to the fiber so that when I tie it in, it doesn't spin around the hook shank. Then you can just let go of it and get a good look. It looks, looks pretty good. So you still wanna take those wraps too far into that bend, otherwise it's gonna cause uh, all that um, hair to tip over the edge of that hook shank and not look so real anymore. So as we come back up a little ways here, I'm just gonna take my scissors and I'm gonna cut this off at a bit of a shallow angle, something like that. I'm gonna make a little bit of a taper, coming up to the post that I'm gonna tie in next. And I wanna leave myself a little bit of space, probably two eye lengths back from the eyes where I'm gonna tie in my post because we do want to have some of the fly that's ahead of the post as well. So don't think of the post as being the front of your fly. It's actually about a third back um, on the hook shank itself. So we have some nice pair of post material here. I just want you to grab a piece that's maybe just over an inch long and trim it out. So I'm left with a piece, something like this. Okay. And then I'm, I like the, the style of tying this in I like to do is folding it over my thread. So I don't need to use all of this. So I'm going to go ahead and pull out a little bit of this because I'm going to be doubling it over. I do like a prominent post. I don't like it to be sparse. I think it's harder to tie the post itself in as well as to be uh, seen. So I'm going to find that kind of midway point and I'm just going to tie that in right there, right on top of the hook shank. Take a couple thread wraps, secured in place. And then I can grab and I can lift it up like so. And then what I want to do from this point is I want to take some thread wraps kind of in front and behind before I start working up the post. Just kind of making a little bit of a, a dam on either side to hold it in position so it's not gonna try to run away at all on us. And then I'm gonna slide my thread up onto the post itself. And this is kind of the finicky part because until you build a, a little bit of a base 
up, it's kind of hard to let go of it. But I'm just gonna start doing some thread wraps up it, even if they're a little spaced out, then work some threads back down it. And eventually, once we get a little bit of a base on this, I'll be able to let go and do kind of more thorough wraps. So at this point, I can probably let go, okay? And now I'm just gonna start doing a number of wraps to really build up the base where we're gonna put our hackle. And we want that uh, post to stand up nice and proud. We don't want it to be kind of floppy or moving over or falling over. So you can see once you get enough uh, wraps on it, it stiffens up enough that you can do quite a few wraps without even holding it. And it's always hard to know quite how far to work up the post, but I, I like to do a couple of eye lengths kind of up, leave myself a little extra space, and I'm gonna come back down. And then once I'm back down again, I'm just gonna do a few more thread wraps. Just making sure everything's bound in quite nicely. And you'll be able to tell by how much tension you can put on it if it's gonna tip over on you or, or not, okay? Okay, so from this point, um, we're gonna get into our next material, which is gonna be kind of our ribbing that's gonna come back up at the end. So it's just a piece of gold flash. And I'm gonna tie this in here on the near side of the fly and I'm gonna work this back in towards my tail. So I'll just come in, tie it in, work that back to where I tied in the tail. Make sure that's good and secure. That is a slippery material, so we don't want that to come out. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and get my hackle ready and tied in. So at this point, um, when I come back up the fly, my hackle's already in place. And I don't have to mess around with it. So here's your hackle right here. What I want you to do to kind of prep it is at the bottom, we're just gonna go ahead and tear off a few of those fibers of it. We're at the bottom exposing a bit of the stem because we need to tie in the stem and have it go up and into the post. So I like to do this on the near side of the fly. It's a little bit easier to see, but I kind of come in here at like a 45 degree angle, leaving a little bit of that um, bare stem sticking up to go up the post. I'm gonna tie it onto the main hook shank first, secure that down towards the eye, then bring my thread back towards the post, lifting up that hackle, and now I'm gonna do what I did when I tied it in the post. I'm gonna start taking some thread wraps up the post to secure it. Once I get a few of them on, I should be able to put a little bit of tension and just do some more wraps like so. Really securing that in there. We don't want that hackle to slip out on us when we we're at the very end of the fly. It'd be really frustrating if that's how it kind of finished. Okay, so we got our hackle on. Um, it's tied into position. We got our tail on, we got our rib on. Kind of the last thing of materials we're gonna put in is we're gonna um, work in our actual hairs ear dubbing. So what I would say for this is put in more on this little dubbing noodle we're gonna create than you think you need because when we put the ribbing over, it compresses it. Um, and it's gonna make it seem like there's less material there. We do kind of want this to look pretty buggy um, and big, but at the same time, I would also suggest that we build a bit of a taper. So we want it to be a little thinner at the back end and kind of grow in size as we get up towards the head. So I'm gonna come in here and as always, when we're making that dubbing noodle, we're only moving our fingers in one direction on that thread, just pinching and, and twisting it in. <laughs> one direction, never gets old. He waits for that, just for that moment. Okay, so I'm gonna spin this in pretty tight, about as tight as I can as I move down my thread. And I want this to be about three inches long by the time I get down. It's always easy to add some more at the end if you need to, but I do wanna spin it pretty tight, otherwise this is gonna be seem extremely buggy, which isn't a terrible thing, but at the same time, we wanna control some of those, uh, kind of those more sticky and I don't know the word I'm looking for here. Those almost like really strong barbed uh, hairs that are in this hairs here. So once I've got that noodle built, I'm gonna make sure it's nice and tight right at the back and I'm gonna start doing some wraps. So watch for that ribbing material, make sure it's out of the way, everything else. We need that to start right by the tail. And remember what I said about making it nice and bulky to start because it's gonna get compressed, so I wanna, even if I gotta wrap back over my materials, I'm trying to just use this noodle to build a bit of a taper all the way up. And once I get to about here, I'm gonna leave my thread, and this ribbing is just gonna be on the back portion of the fly. So I'm gonna bring this under, do a few, a few wraps forward with it. Nice and kind of evenly spaced. It even creates a little bit of segmentation 
as we go up. And then I'm gonna be tying this actually in with the remainder of my wraps. So I'm gonna bring it to right there. Then I'm gonna pass my dubbing over top of it, which is gonna secure it. And then take some more up there. I'm gonna go ahead and trim out that ribbing while I'm right here. So we got that nice little ribbed at the back. And now I'm gonna add a little bit more dubbing just to finish up at the head. Build a nice kind of bulky head on this fly. And then we'll get to the part that nobody really seems to enjoy, which is working with that post and wrapping the hackle. But hopefully we can keep it nice and simple for you. So we're gonna come up here, work that all the way forward to the eye and then back, making sure Looking at both sides of the fly, making sure you're covering up those little gaps on either side of that post. I'll bring that back over there. And when I leave it this time, I'm gonna leave it on the far side, but when I, what I'm gonna show you here is how I'm gonna turn my um, hook and my vise, and that's actually gonna reorient this so that this is hanging off the post itself. So it's much easier to work with a post if you flip it like so in your vise. Make sure that's good and secured. And now from this point, it does look very buggy. You can see there's lots of little strands hanging down and about. We are gonna trim up some of that at the end because we don't really want that to look that way. But what we want is to make sure all of that parapost material is kind of on its own at this point and pulled together so you can kind of twist it like that. Now I'm gonna start making some wraps with this hackle back down the post. And as you start, you're probably gonna have to hold the post because it is still quite mobile right at the very top. And then we just wanna do touch and wraps as we come down. You're probably gonna get three or four turns in before we get right down to the top of the fly. And then we're gonna take our thread and capture that and try to not to lock in any fibers, if, as, as many as you can anyways. You're still gonna probably have to trim out a few, but I got those locked in pretty good. But before I cut out that hackle, I would like to whip finish it because that way I know that it's definitely locked in place. Now don't get scared by whip finishing on a post. It's no different than whip finishing at the eye of the fly. Instead of um, doing it at the actual eye, we're just gonna do that same motion over top of the post itself. And this is where it gets tough to not trap a lot of extra um, fibers. So I'm just gonna work around them the best I can. We wanna do about a three or four turn whip finish. Just like so. Make sure that's good and tight. Then I'll come in here and trim out my thread. Be pretty careful not to trim anything else. And set your bobbin aside, then we can go ahead and trim out that hackle, which should be on your side of the fly at this point. Like that, we'll get that out of the way. And then we're gonna reorient this in our vise again so we can see it a little better. then we're gonna do a little bit more trim in here. So if you find that you have any of that hackle that's sticking down in a way that it's kind of obscuring the fly itself, all you wanna do is go ahead and trim it out. I don't have too much of that on this one, but I do have some of that hair's ear that's sticking down below the hook point. So I just wanna kind of trim that up a little bit, make that look a little bit more natural like so. And now I'm gonna come straight vertical and I'm gonna trim out that post, leaving a little bit as a cider like so, so I can see it. And then I just kind of like to spread it out a little bit. If you push down on it with your finger, it's gonna kind of plump it up a bit. And from this point, we're done. You can add some resin to that if you'd like. I prefer to not go in there, just do a good, good whip finish. I find that if I put resin in there, it often binds up the hackle itself, and I don't really like the way that that sits. But otherwise, that is what we have for a hair's ear parachute. So just a classic twist on a hair's ear nymph. We're putting it as a, a parachute as a bit of an emerger pattern. And that is what we're left with. Okay guys, I wanna thank you again for joining us for another quick tie. Again, my name is Tim Hepworth here with Fly Fishing Bover Outfitters and Thursday Night Live Fly Tying. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this video. Um, it'll let you know next week when we have a couple more flies uh, coming your way. Till then, have a great week.